Luz Inácio Lula da Silva will be the next president of Brazil. He beat incumbent Jair Bolsonaro in a runoff election Sunday night. Election officials say da Silva took 50.8 percent of the vote. Bolsonaro has yet to concede. This will be da Silva's second term as president. He previously led the country from 2003 until 2010. In 2017, da Silva was one of several politicians convicted in a widespread bribery scandal called Operation Car Wash. He spent more than a year in prison before a judge overturned the conviction last March. Joining us to share more about this nail-biting victory is Eric Farnsworth. Eric is the vice president for the Council of the Americas. Uh, thank you for joining us. You know, this election was obviously mm -hmm. very tight with Bolsonaro supporters um, not quite accepting these mm -hmm. results. Yeah, politics in Brazil is complicated, isn't it? Uh, and in the run-up to the uh, vote yesterday, there was a lot of speculation that, in fact, led by one of the candidates, Sajá Bolsonaro, that uh, the vote would somehow be rigged or uh, unfair. And so some of the supporters have certainly taken that to heart. But uh, by all indications, the vote was free and fair. It was credible. Uh, the White House came out immediately congratulating Lula da Silva for his victory. Uh, so there may be a temptation among some of the supporters to not accept the result, but I think uh, for the most part, Brazilians have and the international community has, and people are moving on. And so, you know, how far do you think Bolsonaro supporters will take that, um, this, you know, before he concedes? And, and how will da Silva's, or Lula, as he's called in, in Brazil, uh, criminal history play at all a factor in his credibility? It's a really complicated question. You would hope that the losing candidate would have conceded by now and would have congratulated the victor. He hasn't done that. Uh, but a number of people close to him have given indications that, in fact, uh, Bolsonaro will leave peacefully on January 1st when the term ends. Uh, and we have to remember that a number of uh, people who are not just close to Bolsonaro, but really part of the movement that he brought to the fore in Brazil have been elected governor and Congress people from Brazil. And so there are a lot of folks who have actually uh, been elected in a way that they don't want the election overturned and they don't want the results questioned. And mm -hmm. no doubt some of those uh, people are weighing in right now with Bolsonaro uh, to accept the result. There may be some sporadic violence. There certainly will be some people in Brazil who don't accept the result, just like in the United States. But having said that, uh, the system seems to be holding very well. Uh, and that's what most people are looking at. Mm -hmm. Bolsonaro was widely criticized for Brazil's COVID response, as you know, and as well as its record on the environment. How did uh, Lula's strategy differ? Yeah, it's really an important point. COVID uh, was something that hit Brazil harder than most other countries in the world. And the president's response appeared to many to be callous and really unfeeling almost, uh, you know, like he didn't care about it so much. And that did play into the election. Uh, you have to remember, of course, COVID was unique in the history of any country. So we don't know how Lula would have handled it had he been president. But I think going forward, you could anticipate that Lula would certainly have a different type of response. He would show more empathy for the people. Uh, he would also likely try to promote more of a health care type uh, uh, environment in Brazil. For example, uh, Bolsonaro kicked out the Cuban doctors, uh, whereas Lula would probably welcome them back in or at least have positive things to say. The environment was the same. Uh, mm -hmm. Bolsonaro was perceived as being very, not just unresponsive to Amazonian protection, but actually wanting to uh, accelerate the rate of, uh, of, of for deforestation to help support Brazilian economic growth. When Lula was president earlier this century, the rate of deforestation was uh, was reduced. So you can anticipate that that will also be uh, a differentiation going forward. So what kind of relationship did the Silva have with the U.S. in his previous administration? And what relationship is he likely to have with the Biden administration going forward? Well, you know, it's funny because when he was president the first time, uh, George W. Bush was president in the United States. And despite dramatically different politics, their personal relationship was very good. Uh, and then uh, when President Obama was elected, he also had a a good relationship with, with uh, Lula, although it wasn't perhaps as warm as it was with George W. Bush. Uh, with President Biden, we can anticipate a very strong relationship. President Biden knows Lula from before when he was vice president. Uh, he's engaged with him, uh, and he has uh, had a, a, a very strong 
uh, supportive statement already, both from the White House and also on his Twitter account last night congratulating President Lula. It's very clear that the White House is more comfortable with the agenda that they think that Lula will pursue as president uh, than they were with the uh, agenda that uh, Bolsonaro was pursuing during his term. So you can anticipate that there will be an effort right away, and there already has been, to have a warm relationship. Having said that, Brazil is a very strong, sovereign country. It has its own interests, and you can also anticipate some very strong differences uh, going forward on things like uh, policy toward Venezuela or policy toward China or some of the things in terms of the economic uh, issues that uh, we both collectively face. So this is not going to be a uh, you know, bed of roses going forward. Uh, and as you alluded to earlier, Lula does have some personal baggage that he also brings to this presidency uh, in terms of a very divided population who also sees some of the negative side of when he was president as well. So uh, the election was free and fair. The result is well known. Uh, but now the hard part begins. That's governing. And we'll see how that goes. And mm. Eric, when you talk about the connections with Venezuela, China, this being a large country, can you just reiterate for our viewers why there was so much focus and attention on what is happening in Brazil? Yeah, it's, uh, it's such an important country, not just in terms of Latin America, but also in terms of the global uh, commons. Brazil is the sovereign country of the vast majority of the Amazon basin, which is uh, critically important in terms of the health of the global environment and contributes in terms of global climate change issues. But also you have Brazil's geographic position uh, in South America, which is a neighbor of Venezuela, which we all know has been a collapsing country for a long time. And Brazilians, uh, Brazil's um, uh, approach to Venezuela uh, has been generally supportive of the U.S. approach in the past. One wonders if it will change under Lula. I would, I would anticipate that it probably will. And then the other question you raise is China. China is Brazil's top uh, trade partner and has been for a number of years. Uh, Chinese slowdown in growth is going to hit and is already hitting Brazilian growth hard, and so that's going to be a challenge for Brazilians to manage. But in terms of the political relationship, Bolsonaro tried to reduce Brazil's political uh, profile with China. He did to a certain extent. Uh, that was convenient for the United States. But under Lula, you could anticipate that that's going to reinvigorate the bilateral relationship between Brazil and China. I don't think that's going to be a huge concern for the United States until and unless it becomes uh, a mm -hmm. challenge from a political yeah. perspective, mm -hmm. which you could anticipate. Very All right. large country, 214 million people yeah. in Brazil. Very influential. Eric Farnsworth of the Council of the Americas, thanks for your insight into the region. We appreciate it. Thank you.